Listen, new show. I got a new show alert. Baby, I was in my travels and look what I walked up upon. Baby, house on fire. Baby, when I tell you this show right here, there's so much to be said about this. I am so excited. I'm so excited for this. I usually do not do reviews on reality shows for my people, for, for my young people. Um, like I, I just usually don't do that, but this deserves talking about. This is literally, it's like Pose in real time. It is way past two. Baby, I am here for it. Welcome to Spiller Boy TV. Welcome to my review for House on Fire. This is the premiere episode. Let's go. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. I appreciate it and welcome. I am Skullboy TV for those who don't know me. For those of you who do, y'all already know, baby, I am overjoyed, okay? So listen, House on Fire is a new reality show. It's found over at Wild Presents. I'm just gonna tell you starting out before I even start talking about the show. I watched the first episode. The first episode was available for free on YouTube. I literally stumbled upon it. I don't know how I missed any advertisement that's been done. I've heard nothing, which is crazy because of what it's actually about and who it actually is that I've heard nothing. But I stumbled upon it. It came in front of me because that's what was supposed to happen. It came in front of me. It is a reality show chronicling the house of Miyaki Mugler. Listen, listen. A few of the folks here I've seen due to them being on Legendary and that kind of thing, also seeing them out here in this, this internet space, House of Miyaki Mugler is very popular, very relevant. Um, Definitely a house that I would say yes to doing this type of a project. And when I tell you the quality of the production, Miyaki Mugler, but that don't always happen. That don't always happen. That, you know, reality shows chronicling our people get this type of production quality. Fantastic. Fantastic. I was so proud sitting there watching this. So it's, listen, we're going to do this. I'm going to review this show. I literally watched the first episode. And before I was finished with the first episode, I paused it and I went and I subscribed to Wow Presents Plus so that I can actually watch. The, the uh, episodes are going to be released on Tuesdays. And baby, I'm going to be right there for the shits. I am here for it. So there are going to be some time. I'm going to say, listen, just so y'all know, I'm going to say some things that you probably ain't going to like sometime. Sometime I'm going to say some things that you're really going to like. It just is what it is. This is real. This is a actual reality show. A reality show that is done in a way it should be respected. This could fall onto a Bravo. It, I mean, Wild Presents is big deal. It's a big deal, but it could definitely fall on MTV. It could fall on Bravo. It could fall any of those places. I'm telling you, the production quality is stellar. It's stellar. Everybody looks so good. Everybody looks so good. And then I'm seeing the progression of when I did see a few of the kids on 
uh, legendary. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh, look at them, honey. It's all that's always the thing of uh, watching the ballroom kids go. We're gonna talk about all that. We're gonna talk about all that. We're gonna talk about all that. Okay. So this is what the show is. The show is literal, literally giving you an insight to the house of Miyaki Mugler and the actual inner workings of a house. And it's not painted that real pretty and real, you know, because legendary is just what it is. Legendary is a game show for the most part. It's a reality game show. It's no different than, you know, America's Got Talent or one of those games, American Idol, you know, fantastic show. It really, really was. And I enjoyed it while it was on the air. But this is literally like watching Pose in real time. And I and I love it. And I love it. And it's the real stuff. And they're letting us in. So some of the characters, I'm going to give you some of the main people. You got Yusuf, who is the overall father of the House of Miyake Mugler. And we found out he's basically like a, a real high power hairstylist. Okay. Because some of that stuff, they just breezed across. Whenever they were on Legendary, he's a hairstylist. Um, you got Exotic. Exotic is the overall mother of the house of Miyaki Mugler and walks Butch Queen face as, and, and a couple other things as he should. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful as he should. Okay, face and all that as he should. Um, then the main ones that you actually see a lot of you see chanel chanel is a beautiful brown chunky girl she's a trans woman and she is lovely and she is she's a big girl and she's funny and she has all i'm trying to think if i missed that maybe she's a mother as well of course, she would be a mother mother underneath exotic, but I don't know if she's not a mother. She definitely will be a mother because she has all the qualities of a house mother, like everything about her screams house mother. It really, really does. She's she young, but everything about her to me screamed house mother, but she's beautiful. She really is beautiful. She's funny. She's engaging. You know, you just can't take your eyes off of her. She is good for TV. Baby, she extra. She extra. She got two. She listen. I was here for her big beautiful self. You hear me? She's got confidence. Look good, sound good, got it going on. And you got her and then you got Tati. Now I remember Tati from on Legendary. Tati. We seen some of Tati. Tati got a quick temper. So we see a little bit of that over on <laughs> Legendary. So I said, boy, so that really was how you get down Miss Tati. Girl, you got a hot temper, girl. But Tati, she's a cutie. And she's Tati and Chanel. Um, Tati's a voguer, OK? Tati and Chanel share a place. And this is the thing. OK, so I grew up on the whole Paris is burning thing. That's that's my my area of things. I'm an old bitch. So that's my area of things, okay? So it's so good to see these bitches are living and living well. Beautiful place. They ain't sitting around. They, they got educations. They got real jobs. They got, you know, it's not a struggle. And let me, let me say this. Don't get it twisted. Even my trans girls and, and the boys, because there's boys, there's butch queens too, who work the gig, okay? They do sex work. It's a real job. Sex work was a thing before we got here. And it was a big thing. It's the oldest profession. Don't get it. That. It's the oldest profession. It has always been here. It will always be here. People will sell booty when we are far and long gone. People will still be selling booty. Booty don't never lose its value. You know, crack. 
dang near messed up the game, okay? Crack, you know, five dollar crackhead hits and shots and blowjobs, damn near fucked up the game, okay? But sex work is very real, very real. And it was a big thing with the trans girls when they could not, they couldn't walk in and get a job at, you know, a Macy's or at Mac counter or wherever. I mean, because now trans girls get jobs everywhere, everywhere everybody else do. But it wasn't always like that, you know, and they are looked down upon a lot of times for sex work. Yet, and that, and that floors me. See, I'm ready to go left. And y'all know I do this. I do this. I'm talking about my people. So I do this. I don't understand how people look down upon sex workers when only fans is fucking popping. What do you think you're doing over there? It's sex work. And a lot of that Twitter, Twitter is money being left on the floor. So we're just looking down upon the girls that do sex work or the guys that do sex work. I don't get it. But know that it is a real job. You know, it's just as real as dealing drugs. You ain't allowed to deal drugs, but people do it. And they're going to always do it. The only problem with dealing drugs is that Uncle Sam ain't getting his part. That's where the problem comes. That's why it's illegal. Because Uncle Sam can't tip in and chap in and get his part. Same thing with sex work. You're pissed because you're not getting your part. But it is a very real thing. So anyway, but these kids, they got jobs. They got shit going on. You know? And, and this is the thing that I like. I'm looking at how far we've come. We got this because, again, the whole thing with Paris is Burning, it was reality. It was a docu-series. It was a docu-series. It was a documentary. Everything was real. Everybody was real. It was their real life in real time. But it was, so, you know, when you look at it, it was, it's so down. You know, the mood is down. It's the, the woe is us look, this is us. We got this going on. We're proud of it. But, you know, woe is us. And people are looking down at us. And, and, and you know, it ain't that no more. Now it's everybody sees what it is. Everybody sees what it takes. And everybody is enamored. And everybody is in awe. And everybody wants a piece of it. And y'all just keep on doing what y'all doing. Make them keep one. And those that don't want it is because they don't understand it and they're mad. Stay mad, bitch. Stay mad. You all keep doing what you... Listen, watching this is very, very eye-opening. I'm telling you. All the questions that a lot of people out there have about house and what is a house, and it gets so tiresome sometimes answering those questions, but this is going to actually help. You actually see the inner workers of what it means to be in a house and does it mean y'all all live together you know them dumb questions this kind of clears it up chanel and tati are just roommates they're just girls that are roommates and then we got roz roz is a butch queen who is their brother who is disrespectful as hell and he extra you know what i mean he's a butch queen you know and Butch Queens, it, it's a lot of our little stuff. Butch Queens and Femme Queens, oh, most of the time they don't see it for each other and they clash. You can see it. There's That's a whole piece of the puzzle here. The last time that Roz and Tati was together, Tati popped him. And shortly after he gets there, we see that dynamic between those two. We see the dynamic between those two. He is their brother. He's a butch queen. They are trans women. There is always, I don't know where it stems from. I really do, but I'm not going to go into it. But there's always a little uh, 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 between the butch queens and the trans girls. And sometimes they really get at each other. Sometimes they can get real nasty. And Tati done went upside his goddamn head. She done went upside his head. But at the end of the day, they're brother and sister. 
he needed a place to stay for whatever reason because i didn't get all the way to that I, it seems like he was coming to try to do something and he just there where they are and he needed a place and they provided that that's that's the house that's that's what we do you know we are family we are family it's a family away from your family and and that i think that that whole thing is being explained here but Ross, yes honey Ross is a piece of work and he is extra and he brings drama and he tati was she was picking when he came in there with that wig honey she's like, where you get that wig <laughs> and she was riding about that wig you know what I mean? But this, you know, and that's just like the stuff that we do to each other. But anyway, that, you know, the last time we seen each other, you don't lay hands on me. So why are you even saying anything to me at all? You know, it could, you know, and he was feeling, he told me, she been gaslighting me since I've been in here and this, that, and the other, and they having their thing. So we got that whole thing going on. That ain't made up. That's a very real thing. Trans girls and butch queens, will have it out and sometimes it get very ugly sometimes it get very ugly sometimes they can't be in the space because this is really unique of them really him moving in and one of them not being his mother see that's the thing when it is a trans woman that is the butch queen's mother that's different because he's not going to very much go back and forth for her because she's mother but the sisters and the brother thing this is different that don't always happen it's new developments because again now look i've been outside of the ballroom scene for years so again there's some things here that i'm really enjoying see i i get i come from the early 90s i am a member of the very first house i'm one of the founding members of the very first house that ever existed in Pittsburgh, which was the House of Domination. So I know that's why I'm like, I'm in awe of everything they got going on. I know what it takes to bring a house together. I know what it is to be a member of a house from the beginning when people don't know what you're doing and people are doubting you and they're saying, mm. you know, and, and our house was nowhere near as big or as elaborate or has any of this stuff going on that Miyaki Mugler is a whole different time. So, you know, I, I remember the hardships of getting all that, that going. I was a child in that house. My drag mother was the mother and my drag, my house father, I'm actually named my character. My Milan Trejour character is named, my name period. My house name is Milan Trejour. Uh, it's Trejour now. That's after I went, because I was a child of domination. So I was Milan domination. Then I ended up moving along and I ended up being a house mother to my own house. And I've disbanded that. But that was all of this took place back in the 90s. I know the hardship of getting that together. Being a house mother and a house father, it's no joke. It is literally parenting. And you're parenting grown folks. See, I've parented actual children ado I adopted children and parented them I've done bottles and 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 diapers and all of that trust me bottles and diapers are a whiz because they don't talk all they want is some milk and then and you don't rock them honey and, and you good this shit with grown folks and all their issues and it's a whole nother type of parenting just like you know once those little babies grow up and your parents and them and they are teenagers and grown folks it's a whole other thing and then you got the whole gay element on top of it when you're a house mother it is nothing easy and that the whole time they're doing this house thing this house thing is a business it is very much a business getting everything together getting productions together you're getting people together to compete and all it is a lot it is a lot and i get it i get it and again remember we never made it to that my house or the you know my original house never made it to this type of thing you know what i mean so my hat is off to what has been accomplished and what they are actually doing i'm lo i love it i fucking love it i love it so some of this stuff i'm looking at and i'm like wow okay 
Let's go. You know, let's go. The ballroom is something serious. It's a lot to it. It's a lot to it. And dealing with all those different attitudes and all those different breakdowns and, and then their relationships. And we got into all of this. Let's go on. We got Brooklyn. Brooklyn is like a baby in the house. She young. Brooklyn had a whole little situation. No different than a regular family. Brooklyn is started in the house when she was 17 years old. She's a voguer and she's drags. She is, you know, butch queen up in drag. Um, later in the season, I seen we're she's we're gonna deal with her, maybe transitioning over into trans. You know, she transition to a trans woman and that kind of thing. She'll start that. But we're gonna see that later on in the season. But there was a whole situation where she had a head, but with guess who? Ross. And they're going back and forth. And and it was a whole situation of I don't have to listen to you, bitch. Who are you? You old, you know, this, that thing, the other. Then she had to get checked by mother. And it's like, you're right, he is old. He helped build this. So you have to respect. It's, I'm telling you, it is no different than when you're dealing with, with your regular family. And this is what I'm always, I'm on YouTube constantly having these conversations, trying to make people understand because they have these questions about what it is we do and, and, and why is it like this? This show is everything as far as that kind of thing goes. It really, really is. It really, really is. But yeah, they had a whole little situation and you see how mother stepped in and took care of it. So we had that little conflict in this first episode. Very interesting. We got Lolita. We got Lolita. Lolita is now this is this is not completely new to me because I've seen this, you know, coming through. Lolita is actually a cisgender or biological woman beautiful she's beautiful she's real real groovy real real groovy and she's like the peacemaker she's like peacemaker she's so even skilled she's another one she has mother qualities complete mother qualities okay she just happens to be cisgender you know which ain't no issue there is a space in the ballroom for every different kind of person every different kind of person there is a place in the ballroom. But Lolita does runway, she does body, she does performance. And in her real life, outside of all, she is an actual professional singer. So I am definitely, uh, you know, all them things. I love all that. I'm a whole drag queen and I'm a performer. So I'm here for all that. So definitely wanting to see more of her story and that kind of thing. She real, real sharp real sharp, but they love her, you know, just like everybody else in the house. So I loved seeing that. Okay, so let's get down to this, where the big drama is. Here's the big drama that concerns, it's a whole kerfuffle, mother, father, and then there's two other people. Okay, so mother and father that met up and they they both got something they got to tell each other. I said, okay, so what's what's going on? Now we're going to do house and ballroom politics, child. Father actually has a individual named AJ, cute boy, who is interested in entering the house. Now, Mother and father of the house, it can be done when the mother or the father just says, listen, this is what's happening. This person's coming. But that ain't usually how it happens, honey. When somebody comes and they're trying to enter the house, we take it to a vote. We sit with the house and everybody puts their input as to yay, nay, why, or why not this person is a fit for the house. And what are they bringing? Is it worth worth it what do you know about baby we go through a whole meeting honey and the meeting can get nasty baby and all your shit gonna come up what what is you know what we what we don't know about this hoe that may have us all wrapped up in some mess you got to vet them so you're actually getting to see all this see you ain't see mm -mm. 
Now, Pose gave you some of these things, and you thought you was watching a dramatization, but I told y'all in all my Pose reviews, baby, this is all real stuff. Pose was literally run on, I could give you names, times, and dates of a lot of the stories that was told on Pose. Those were real stories. Names, times, and dates, and the people that was involved, but I ain't, but I ain't. Some of them gone, some of them still walk around. Some of them gone, some of them still walk around. Some of them little craft things and some of them stunts, baby. Some of them stunts was done multiple times. I give you times, dates, and I can tell you where the bodies is buried, but I ain't. I ain't. Some of that shit is going to the grave with me. But anyway, so we got AJ. Now, AJ just happens to be Exotic's ex. Now, that's very loose when I say ex, okay? When I say ex, it, it, it's the thing. They weren't actually exclusively dating, but I think they got all the way down, okay? You know what I mean? So it was just timing. The timing was off. Like, well, one was ready, the other one wasn't ready, and they just never got it together, and then they ended up splitting. And then they haven't really seen each other and that kind of thing. Exotic actually has a man at this point, and... AJ is actually a friend of Yusuf's, okay? So Yusuf is coming to Exotic with this, and Exotic's like, oh, shit. And then they're like, well, we got to take it to this here vote. They were having this dinner over there at Chanel's house. They have Chanel and uh, Tati's place. They were planning this big old dinner, and so they invited AJ to the dinner to sit him in with the kids to see if the kid, you know, just to get a vibe and kind of, the, you know, they ain't sitting having a conversation about them without them. They actually invited them to dinner so they could have some interaction with them. And then they're going to get on down and kind of figure out what's really going on. Now, Exotic didn't go left with it. She like, you know, mm, wow. okay. You know, again, that whole what's best for the house kind of thing. So I said, that's going to be sticky. Because you got other daughters and stuff like that. And then y'all see it's all that real life shit. Because now you done play with them. Now you got daughters. Because surely during the, the uh, dinner, hey, Miss Chanel was given, oh, baby. Now, I don't, they don't know. The kids didn't know that Exotic actually has a past with him. But honey, Miss Chanel was given, yes, baby, your outfit is horrendous. But baby, you're everything up underneath that outfit is fabulous. So I'm like, oh shit, here we go with this drama. Child, put all a bunch of gay folks together. You're going to get drama. <laughs> here we go. Y'all know I love an old nasty piece of love triangle, honey. That's one of my favorite things to write about is an old nasty piece of love triangle. Every book that I have written, there is something going on with a love triangle. I love it. I love the dynamics and how messy shit gets. Anyway, so that's what we got going on with AJ, Eddie. And AJ got two. AJ got two. Um, I seen some narcissism. I seen some mean girl shit in there. I, I seen some thirst in there. And he got a lot of stuff that he's bringing to the table. He really does. He has a lot of talent and 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 good attributes that he's bringing to the table. But he also got some shit that he's bringing to the table too. So I seen that Yusuf basically is kind of on board with bringing him in. Exotic stills kind of like I don't know, and we'll see what happens with the kids. So on the flip side of that, we actually have Lena. Lena is an ex member who she is a trans woman and she is very popular. She is the first trans woman that's ever been on Sports Illustrated. She is a big deal right now, right now in real time. She's a big deal. She had a pretty uh, departure from the house. Her celebrity overloaded her presence in the house. And she was running into some problems with some of the other members. And she was giving the girls very. And 
couple of girls gave girl, I will beat your ass. Now, were they correct in that or were they wrong? See, jealousy is a very ugly thing, but it will rear its head, okay? So you have to watch that. Also, being a famous bitch is another thing you have to watch because when you give the wrong person too much, you don't want that, okay? Because at the end of the day, remember, we are a bunch of queens, and some of us can be very vindictive. And see, Miss Lena, you make your money with your body and your face. The last thing you want to, is to be bumped around, banged around, and have your face slashed. So you want to walk lightly with some of these queens. And she knows that. She knows that. So when things got a little ugly, she left. And she didn't really talk to... Um, exotic or Yusuf, she just kind of rolled out. And that wasn't the biggest part of the problem, but her and exotic go way, way back to like when they were like 14 to 15 years old. So he's really hurt by the way she just left them hanging. Same thing with Yusuf. And Yusuf is really pissed. Okay. So Yusuf is not so in it to have her come back. He feels like she needs to do some apologizing and she needs to really humble herself. And then he he really is like kind of, he feels kind of way because not only does she just roll out and they literally have not seen her. And now she's back on the scene and she's asking to be readmitted back into the house. And the thing is the way that she left, she kind of gave very much vibe that the house is beneath her and she don't need the house. Like, I'm, I'm who I am now. I don't need the house, child. Psh, the hell with y'all, honey. I'm not dealing with that. And the hell with it. And then she left. Not only did she leave, she actually got down there with them damn Twitter fingers. And she wrote and then let everybody know, I'm not part of the house of Miyaki Mugler anymore. So then it caused a whole thing. Because she, she's, she was a beast on the ballroom floor, baby. She's a beast on the ballroom floor. So that was like, they give it, oh, their secret weapon is gone, honey. Yeah, honey. So that caused some stuff. And it caused some embarrassment. As it would, it's some embarrassment to the house. So that's where Yusuf was really feeling the kind of way. He feeling the kind of way with that as over our father. Exotics thing was more personal because of who they were. They were sisters to each other and have been since they were children. So that's kind of, you know, that that's where that thing is. But Exotic is ready to forgive and bring her on back home. Yusuf is given, mm -mm, bitch, because you fucked with the business. You mess with the business of Miyaki Mugler. So it's going to be more than that. You're not just going to show back up and then we just going to accept you back, which make us look like we thirsty for you and that kind of thing. So now there's some things being tossed around. And here's my thing. What's really going on here is where somebody might be mad with me, but I'm going to say it. What's going on really with Miss Lena? Is it really that moist for you like that, sis? Because you left them. And then you talk shit with Twitter fingers as if the house wasn't shit. But now you on your way back. Why? Why? What did you miss? Is it really that the well is different when the water ain't in it? And now all you own is a dry well and you're not getting fulfilled like the fulfillment that you actually had. You overshot your hand is what it looks like to me. You overshot your hand and success can sometimes be very lonely. Yeah, you're that girl, but if ain't nobody giving a goddamn about you being that girl, except for when you on these sets and then when you walk off the set, then you, you're, you're that girl, you're the girl that's over there by herself. Is that what actually happened? I don't know. So we're going to have to see that because now it's like it's in this place. Now she want to come back. They don't know if they want her back. Chanel ain't for it. 
Chanel, there came up. There was a point where Yusuf had to pull Chanel to the side and talk to her separately, like, girl, what's going on? And let her know that she wasn't fighting that fight because she was fighting that fight, baby. She's like, fuck her. <laughs> okay. I don't need it. I ain't got time for her. She walked the hell with her. Okay. So some of the kids, again, because that is, it's embarrassing. Every member of that house, I'm sure, had to go through the people giving, tell them, you know, we don't like that. As queens, honey, we don't like that. I'm like no bitch giving all that, honey. Like they got one up on you, honey. And she's the one that gave the people one up on them. So they're pissed. They're pissed. I get it. But at the same time, I'm looking at her and I'm saying, girl, do you want to be somewhere where you're actually not being celebrated, that you're actually being tolerated? Because as it turns out, you weren't very well liked because your behavior was so bad. Your behavior was so bad. And they're saying, do she deserve spe special treatment? Yes, because she brings this, 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 and this. I'm like, okay, yeah, so we get it. She's an asset, but is it really worth kissing her ass? Is it really worth kissing her ass? Only thing happened that after this is somebody from another house will try to snatch her up and then she'll become an enemy. And then y'all have to battle with her. But that's the nature of the ball. Let's be. Let's be. But yeah, it's all now at this point. It's, it's, you know, I think when it all started, she was there originally. It was she's our sister. We are all building this together. And that kind of thing. Now it's given. What can she bring to us? Because if. You know, what we've been making it without her. We've been making it without her. Do we really need her? That's kind of where it is. She's going to bring some trophies. Then they actually, have, you know, said, so, you know, like she can bring in this and she can bring in that. And again, she probably could open up some different doors. But again, now she need to be thinking about, girl, are you coming back in as a full on family member? Or are you coming back in as? an asset where you were actually a liability and an asset at the same time but now you just they ain't even going the liability if you ain't gonna happen because ain't nobody gonna take your shit they're gonna cuss your ass out whenever they feel like it the special treatment is not gonna happen you're gonna earn your keep you know things ain't gonna be the same things just ain't the same that's that's it you so if this is going to be very interesting to watch this roll out and i'm like i see it i see it and it's that one little piece if she would have just left i think everything could have been fine but you went on there talking shit and you did the twitter for twitter fingers will always mess you up it will always mess you up always so listen i'm gonna stop right here i'm gonna stop right here Go and get you all a subscription so y'all can take this journey with me over there at Wild Presents because every Tuesday, baby, I'm going to be watching the show and I'm going to be reviewing. I'm going to be giving my take on what it is that's going on because I am I am fully vested and I am here for the show. I'm here for the show. I'm here for the show. I'm locked in. I am locked in. I am loving this. Anyway, so that's that. And then the first episode, like I said, it is on YouTube. Just go to Wild Presents um, on YouTube and you can get to see the first episode. I'll be back very soon with the second episode because the second episode is actually sitting in Wild Present Plus. So I'll be coming back very soon, very, very soon with my second review. Yes, yes, yes. I surely will. So listen, y'all go get your subscription so y'all can take this ride with me because I think this is going to be very good. Very good. I'm here for it. All right, y'all. I will catch y'all on the flip side later. <laughs>